Kristaps Porzingis is at jeopardy of missing more playoff time after suffering a seriously rare and unusual injury to his left ankle. And in this video, we're gonna talk about that, plus what could be going on with these pain-killing injections that Luka Doncic is receiving. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and my goal on this channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. We got some really shocking news about Porzingis suffering this injury to his left ankle. I know he's listed day to day, but we'll talk about what the implications could be and what this injury is. So let's look at the release. Torn medial retinaculum, allowing dislocation of the posterior tibialis tendon in his left leg at three minutes, 27 seconds of the third quarter. So torn, that's pretty understandable. There was a tear in the structure. Medial is the anatomical term for on the inside. Retinaculum is the little seat belt or ligament that goes over the tendons, which then allowed dislocation, a word we all understand, of the posterior tibialis tendon, which goes down the inside of the ankle at 327. This was the play that occurred at three minutes and 27 seconds left in the third quarter. And here we could see Porzingis going up to try and get this rebound, and I want you to focus on his left ankle. So. In this position, the medial side of the ankle is going to be right here. The lateral is going to be over here. Whenever Porzingis goes in to make this move here, we see there's a little bit of contact from the Mavericks player. That pushes his left leg inward a little bit, and we see this ever so slight E version of his ankle. So look at how his ankle goes from being nice and straight to then a little bit bowed inward where that medial malleolus, that inner part of the ankle, is going to go that way. So we click through right there, that little subtle E version with his foot still pointed off in this direction. Look at how awkwardly contorted his body is. His thigh is going this direction, his foot, his tibia is going off that direction. That's going to put stress on that medial inner part of the ankle, and that would fit very well with when this injury occurred based on what we know. On the subsequent play down the court, we saw Porzingis trying to go out and play defense. And as he lunges here, he lands there on his right. And as that whole play continues, he comes up and then doesn't want to land or put any weight on that left foot, signifying again, there was an injury, he had pain, and didn't want to put pressure on that left foot. This structure highlighted in blue is the medial retinaculum. And we're gonna talk about its importance, the anatomy, and how long Porzingis could be out in a minute. But first, I wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video. Today's video is sponsored by Groons. As a doctor, I'm always trying to educate people on the importance of proper nutrition and getting all the essential vitamins and minerals that your body needs. Groons makes that easier than ever with their delicious daily gummy that features all of those vitamins and minerals that your body relies on. Most generic multivitamins only contain around seven to nine key ingredients, but Groons contains 20 plus vitamins and minerals and over 60 whole food ingredients. Their vitamins are at 100% of your daily needs and minerals at 25%, a very safe and effective amount. Right now, if you head to the link in the description below, you can get up to 45% off of Groons today. They come in these really nice little single serving packs that don't have to be refrigerated, and each individual serving features eight of these really delicious, really nice tasting gummies. I feel like I'm eating my two-year-old's fruit snacks. There's no artificial colors or flavors, but these things still taste amazing. You can pick two options, one with three grams of sugar or what I chose, sugar-free. So ditch all those messy powders that you have to clean up after and try out some Groon's Daily Gummies with ingredients backed by over 35,000 research publications. Thank you again to Groon's for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to our learning. So looking at our biodigital anatomy tool here, if we turn and look straight on at the ankle, of course, this is going to be the medial inside, this is going to be the lateral outside. We see the fibula, which is the bone on the outer part of the ankle with those lateral ankle ligaments involved in a sprain. But then if we turn and look at the inside of the ankle, we get to this region that we call the tarsal tunnel. Tarsus is the ankle and tunnel, it's that tunnel, that pathway going down through this inner part of the ankle. The structure all the way on the outside here is called the medial retinaculum. Think of it like a thin layer of connective tissue that kind of acts like a seat belt or a restraint to keep the underlying structures in their proper position as they make their course from the upper leg down through that tarsal tunnel and out to the foot. So the posterior tibialis tendon is one of three tendons that runs through that tarsal tunnel on that inside part of the ankle. The posterior tibialis muscle originates much higher up in the backside of the leg, so it could almost, if you have a muscle tear, kind of mimic like a calf or a soleus injury, but it then has this really, really long tendon, highlighted here in blue, that wraps around this retromalleolar groove through the inside of that medial malleolus, all the way down and inserts onto the mid portion of the foot. Its function is gonna to be to help impart plantar flex the foot, but then also to invert or point the ankle inward. 
The other structures, there's two other tendons that run through this area. There's the flexor digitorum longus that goes down underneath the bottom of the foot and then ultimately goes out to curl or flex the toes downward. And then the structure on the farthest backside is going to be the flexor hallucis longus, which runs down the underside of the foot and then ultimately goes onto the bottom of the big toe to flex your big toe. So the other reason we call this structure, this retinaculum, the flexor retinaculum is because all of these tendons that course through that area impart flex or curl the foot or toes downward. So we've got structures running through this tarsal tunnel. They need to stay in that place. Part of it is because of just the bony anatomy of this groove behind the bottom part of the tibia, but then this flexor retinaculum keeps everything nice and snugged up tight in that location. If this flexor retinaculum tears or you get a significant enough injury that causes a fracture where a piece of the bone pops off, those tendons, specifically that posterior tibialis tendon, can then dislocate out of that groove and pop on the forward side of that lateral malle or that medial malleolus, excuse me. So if we look kind of top down, we've got the inside of the foot here, that tendon sitting on the back side of that medial malleolus. When that retinaculum tears, the tendon can dislocate and pop out forward. Now it's important to understand this doesn't mean that there's a tendon rupture. So the tendon can still fire, the muscle can fire, you still have somewhat decent control of the foot potentially, but that tendon is not in the proper location and so it can cause a lot of pain, you can have a lot of inflammation and dysfunction of those tendons because that retinaculum's not holding it nice and tight. So if we go back now and we look at the play where all of this occurred, it makes sense with how that structure was torn. On this free throw, again, we're looking at the medial inside part of Porzingis' left leg. Those structures on the inner part are gonna be nice and taut, but whenever you evert the ankle so you get a stretch right there, you pull that retinaculum and that posterior tibialis muscle tendon as he's trying to fire it to stabilize his foot and ankle to push off and then curl in down towards the lane, gets contracted, that retinaculum tears, that tendon snaps over the medial malleolus and dislocates. But you can see, like he can still run up and down the court, you can still function with this, it's just going to hurt. Now the thing that most of you wanna know watching this probably is, is he going to play? I suspect he's going to play, he's going to try to play because again, this isn't like a ruptured tendon. It's not like there's no function of the foot. Oftentimes, in fact, these injuries are so rare that we don't even appreciate them right away and we just think somebody sprained the inner deltoid ligament of their ankle. So they might rehab, they might be trying to get back to their sport and then we do an MRI or we look under surgery and we see that tendon has actually dislocated. So this is a very rare injury, oftentimes because we don't appreciate and find it right away. So yes, he can run, he can walk, he can still probably function at a somewhat decent level despite having that retinaculum tear. Now I will say a vast majority of these cases that are out there go on to have surgery because no matter how conservatively you treat it, you aren't able to adequately get that tendon to stay in that spot behind the bone of the medial part of the ankle. That retinaculum can have a hard time scarring and healing over. So most of the time these go on to have surgery, but that doesn't mean you have to do surgery right away. I think it is very reasonable to have a good discussion of the risks and benefits and allow Porzingis to try and play, to try and function with the thought that he very likely is going to have to have a surgery after the season. So I don't think this rules him out for the playoffs. I think it's going to be very hard for him to play effectively. He's gonna have a hard time pushing off. He's gonna have a hard time with control of that ankle. There's gonna be a lot of pain from that tendon, probably dislocating again, maybe repetitively. It might still be dislocated, not in that retromalleolar groove. So he's going to have pain, he's going to have impaired function, but again, it doesn't necessarily cross that threshold of having an unstable ankle, a fracture, a ruptured tendon where you absolutely must sit down. But I don't think he's gonna be very effective. I think he's gonna have a hard time, I think he's gonna struggle, and I would not be surprised at all if he ends up having to have surgery after the finals are over. The last thing to touch on here quickly in this video is of course there's been a lot of talk about Luca. He received these painkilling injections before game two to kind of numb this area from a thoracic contusion. Probably gonna have another injection before game three. My thought with this is that he probably has some type of a rib, costochondral cartilage, some type of a rib injury either in the ribs themselves or where the ribs join up with the sternum and the rest of the chest causing pain, a very reasonable thing to try doing a numbing injection to try and block some of those nerves, block some of the pain. The big risk with this though is the potential risk for collapsing the lung. We saw this happen with Tyrod Taylor in the NFL. And so this is a known risk of doing these anesthetic injections or pain injections around the chest because of how close you are to the rib. Hopefully it's being done with some sort of image guidance to make sure you're staying away from the lung. But my assumption is that Luca 
unless he takes a big hit, unless he takes a big charge or an impact that makes it worse where he just can't breathe, can't play through the pain, I suspect he'll keep playing through this. Hopefully we just don't hear about any complication with a lung injury from the procedure to try and numb those nerves. So that's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. This was probably the first time a lot of you heard about that medial flexor retinaculum, the posterior tibialis tendon. So I love getting a chance to explain these unique topics to you all. Thank you as always for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.